And here we are at the end of May. Good morning, Chet. It's Friday the 31st of May 2013. A warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk. Coming to you live, if you're with us on Friday morning, on that date at 10.30 in the morning, we are live. A very good morning to you. You will be able to join in a little bit later on live as well. Um, I had a couple of people say to me, while you're doing the live show, as, as we started doing this live now, I'm recording it. Uh, a couple of people have said to you, um, can you try not to do other stuff while you're sitting there? So, for example, at this very moment, right, at this very moment, oh, I, I see, now see, I've got to do something now. There we are. Just check, just check you can hear me loud enough. I'll just turn it up a bit. Is that better? Can you hear me all right now? There we are. Um, yes, uh, I, I am fully aware that I have to do other things while I'm sitting here. See, the thing is, there's only me sitting here. You know, there's not like 10 people in another room at the moment pushing buttons or flashing lights or adjusting things while I'm just sitting here talking. I have to do it all. So while I'm sitting here looking at you, and you're looking at me and I'm looking at you and I'm looking at me and talking. While that's happening, also to the left of me is a little screen, OK, with Facebook up. There is an email thing there, so emails can come in. Uh, on the right-hand side, which is, is it's not even open yet. Is it, is it open? Just a minute. Just a minute. Where's that now? We should have that open. There we are. On the right-hand side is my Skype thing, okay? So if anyone was to call in or Skype in, that will come up on the right. Also on the right is a little... It's a shame you can't see all this, actually. Is a little... Uh, mosaic of various different pictures and things that I can show you. Now, I had to prepare all that for the, before the show. So you've got the opening little film, OK? There's the closing little film. There's a caption that says uh, it's coming up at 10.30. There's another photo on there that I'm going to show you later when I'm doing a little story with you. Another bits and pieces on the United Kingdom logo. And I just push a button, you see, and it, it, it goes like that. And then up comes the logo. And I just push another button, and it comes back again. How fabulous is that? I, I, I can cut like that. I can cut like that, you see? Cut. That's cut. Or I can uh, crossfade like this. What do you prefer? Do you prefer the crossfade or the cut? That is this morning's very important question. <laughs> so yes i'm fully aware thank you to those people that uh commented you know do, do you have to keep moving around while you're doing the show and the fact is unfortunately yes because there's only me sitting here doing it to the left is like a a, a a machine that mixes all the different bits of sound so if i wanted to um perhaps someone comes in on the skype wants to call in then i have to adjust things over here and i i, I can't you know move I can't just put my hand... Well, I can, actually. If I thought about it, I suppose I could could put my hand over that. But the the instinct is to look down and do it, and then you see me look away. And, you know, I think eye contact is always very important, isn't it, in a conversation. And unfortunately, when you're sitting here doing something completely alone, as, as my life is, boys and girls, alone, I'm so alone. I'm all alone without you. And for the rest of the week, while I'm not here, I'm very upset and unhappy. Because I am very much alone, boys and girls. It's only when you're here on a Friday morning that I feel fulfilled. <laughs> you're, th you're, th you're probably thinking I'm talking ab absolute rubbish at the moment, aren't you? Never mind. Anyway, so to the left of me is that thing there. Uh, to the right of me are various things uh, I I I've got here, like I was going to show you this. I've bought something. A few things this week, actually. I, I, I've been, been raiding the bank this week. I bought a few bits and pieces this week, and I'll show those to you later on. Um, let me just start this up as well, just a second, because I'm forgetting to do things again. There we are. Put that on there. That's my, that that that. You can see that thing. That's my little voice recorder. So if for some reason the voice doesn't record on the computer, I've got that as a backup. So when I upload the recording of the show later, you can still hear it. Otherwise, it would be a little bit 
and you wouldn't be able to hear it at all okay and the audio i've always said that the audio is more important than the video because there are lots of people that just download the audio part the the audio version of the show the audio version is exactly the same as the video version but obviously without pictures now if you didn't know about that before um you may want to use that because possibly like me you're a driver and i drive i i download podcasts all the time uh, i like science stuff really science and um money things and there's a guy i download called steve allen he's on lbc uh, every morning very early in the morning so i set the record for that and i download him and i listen in the car all the time you know you can download the audio version of this and just listen in the car or, or perhaps um if you're having trouble sleeping you know if you <laughs> if you're having trouble sleeping i've always said a good way to fall asleep is to listen to my dulcet tones there's nothing too jarring in this program we're not political heavyweights, are we? And my best mate Ronnie thinks I should do more, more heavier stories like political. But you see, I'm not a very, I wouldn't class myself as a very intelligent person. And I'd probably get lots of things wrong and then people would start moaning this, that and the other. Do you know what I mean? I know I have views on certain things. I do have views on certain things and a certain, uh, uh, I don't know, a, a certain political state, I suppose. But when it, when it comes to like the whole politics thing and all that, I, you know, I do take an interest, but I don't think I'm the right person to talk about it. Do you know, it's like having Jeremy Paxman uh, do a show on gardening. Or maybe he don't actually no, that's wrong. Maybe he does know a lot about gardening, but you would expect him to do it, would you? And similarly, I don't think you'd expect me to do some sort of hard hitting story. Sometimes I have views on things. Okay, I do have views on things. Like, for example, I was reading a. Um, now you see, I'm looking to the right now because I've got various stories lined up on my uh, computer. Next, I'm trying to save paper. I'm just, you know, we don't print it. This is all I've got printed out today. Just a couple of lovely emails that people have sent in. I try not to print out things and I put them on the screen. So now I look to the left. And the reason I'm looking to the left is because I'm looking at a computer screen. I mean, maybe you, you should see it yourself. I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. I don't think I can do that, actually. Can't do that. But, um, yes, th there's the news story of that um, awful man. Uh, what's his name? Mark Bridger. OK, this is the bloke that's been found guilty on of abducting and murdering this little girl, April Jones. And it was saying he was looking, watching a lot of um, nasty pornography, not, uh, and you know, not not the, uh, dare I say, the ordinary pornography, not the stuff that, um, you know, I, I, people in there that are 18 and above. This is the nasty, the young, very young pornography. Not nice. OK, and they reckon one of the ex one of the reasons he did this was because of that stuff that he watched. Now, and then they say, um, why don't the Internet companies act? And I have to say, I do agree with that. Why can't they block these sites? It must be as easy as flicking a switch. Surely it is. I mean, I'm not a technology expert. A similar thing could be said to the illegal downloading of films and videos and music and all that. Watching these nasty sites, nasty, nasty sites. OK, a vile uh, uh, sex perverts like him watching this stuff on the Internet. So how does he get it in the first place? Well, someone sending it out. Why, oh, why don't the Internet companies simply push a couple of buttons? I'm sure it must be as easy as pushing a couple of buttons uh, on the uh, on the keyboard switching a server off so no longer is this stuff available is there anyone with a technology head on that understands about this so you see you, you see i can't really talk about this because i don't understand how that works see what i mean that sort of thing surely 
should not be allowed on the internet. It's all very well. People start screaming all this free speech and free internet for all and all that and the other, you know. But you wouldn't find someone walking down the street with a uh, a parcel or, or, or a bag full of nasty films. And you know the sort of films we need, we mean here. Not the usual um, stuff that most people, let's be honest, you know, most people will sit at home and perhaps watch on the internet occasionally. No, this is really nasty stuff. You wouldn't find someone walking down the street with this in a bag. Oh, excuse me, do you want to buy some of these? Oh, do you want to buy some of it? You know, you just wouldn't find it. So when these people start screaming free internet for all and all this business, it's not exactly the same, is it? Why can't they just flick something off so that no one can watch this stuff anymore? And on a similar uh, 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 sort of line with music and video downloads. Why can't they just switch off these people that are constantly giving us the free stuff? <clears throat> Perhaps you know. If you do, you can join in this morning. Uh, there's various methods of joining in. Now, I haven't actually put the, the caption captions up, so I'll do that now. If you're watching the recording, you won't get these. Um, I should have done this earlier. Uh, have I got that right there? Yeah. Phone. <laughs> 020. Number 363. I can even remember my own phone number now. How fantastic is that? Font. What do we want? Font. Let's go about 12. Let's see how that looks. Enable text. Does that work? Yes, it does. Hang on, we want to stop that blooming scrolling. That does annoy me, scrolling. There we are, no scrolling. There we are. If you'd like to join in this morning and you're with us live, it's sort of coming up to a quarter to 11 on Friday the 31st of May 2013. If that's the time where you are now, then you are watching live and you can join in. There is a Skype if you have Skype, very easy. Just give us a Skype call. My username is Chris Reardon. Or, or is it Chris Reardon UK? Hang on a minute. No, it's Chris Reardon. Chris Reardon. All one word. Is that the... Someone tell me if that's the right username, were they? All one word, Chris Reardon. C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N is my Skype username. There's also a phone number. If you're in the UK, we have a local London number. It's 020 8133 six three five eight okay o two o eight one double three six three five eight and it'd be great to hear from you uh, this morning at any point <coughs> doing the show if you're wondering what time this show is on until i never know really <laughs> last week we managed uh, 10 30 11 30 i think we did about an hour and three quarters in the end i only ever um intend to do an hour and that's the truth of it I only ever intend to do an hour, but sometimes it does go on a little bit. A little bit like myself. Now, you can also join in uh, by email. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. So there are the various methods uh, of contacting us uh, this morning at any point if you want to have a little bit of a chin wag today. Okay? Um, The Voice. Do you watch The Voice? I've got, I've got my... See, the way I prepare the show, there's a little list of things here for me to talk about. Look at that. I have a whole page, a whole page of lists of things to talk about this morning. Oh, someone's calling in right now. Good morning. Who's on the line this morning? Good morning. It's Gary Owen from South Wales. How are you? Hello, Gary. How are you? All right? I've done new chair performing. I'm very well, thank you. Now, what was it you wrote in about the other week? Um... The leather seat. Eh? The leather seat you had. Oh, the leather seat. I love that accent. Oh, it's a, are you from Welsh Wales? I'm from Port Albert in Wales, yes. Are you from Welsh Wales? I went out with someone in Newport. Yeah, it was rough down there. Jesus, that was rough there. I thought there were some rough parts of London, but that is rough in Newport, mate. Blimey. It is, but we, <laughs> we don't go there. We go straight past. They never used to leave the house after, after six o'clock. <laughs> uh, they, they all got their tags on them, you know? <laughs> no, it's funny you wrote, yeah, you wrote in about that um, uh, leather chair. You know I've got a cloth one now. Yeah. But I've got to be honest, Gary, although this is nothing to do with it being leather or cloth, this is not as good as the last one. No. Um, 
it doesn't go back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It goes up and down. Yeah, it goes up and down and it doesn't go back. And I, it, there's only one lever on it. Oh. Um, well, I was at uh, work on Wednesday and they've got these in the reception area, these like wheel around chairs, similar to this one. And I looked at it and I suddenly realised there was two levers on this thing. Um, so I, I sat down on this chair and the other one, it's got a lever and it goes back. So I've, had, I've ordered one of those as well now. Not bad price, though. 42 quid. They're enough cheap. Yeah, they're so much cheaper than they used to be. They used to be two or three hundred quid, those bloody chairs. And they used to be made in the UK, that's right. Yeah, now they're I made know. in China. I know. But uh, So I've ordered another one of those, and uh, hopefully that's going to come uh, next week sometime. So I'll have two of these blooming chairs. I can't take one back now, can I? Not after my fat ass has been sitting on it for a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you can have some, a local caller can sit in there and help you with the show props. Well, you know that's that's fine. Yeah, we could have we could have people in here any time. I'm quite happy about that. Yeah, next time in, I'm up in London on the Friday, I'll pop in and see you. Yeah, yeah, good. Where are you now then, mate? In the South Wales, in the Talbot. Oh, you're actually in Wales at the moment, are you? Yeah, I, I used to work in Leatherhead in Surrey. Leatherhead is not too far from me. Yes. Yeah, it's just and on that's, the road. Um, a course is near uh, Guildford. That's right, yeah. I'll tell you what, Gary, years ago, I'm talking when I was 14, 15, 16 now, so that when would that be? That would be a 6, 3, 7, 4, 7, 5, 7, 6, so I ran about 75, 76, 77. Uh, my mum and dad used to take myself and my sister uh, regularly in the summer months to uh, Guildford Lido. Yeah. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, no, I haven't, no. It's probably oh, just not what? younger now. Just wondered if it was still there. I mean, at the time, it was a bit run down. Presumably, they've done it up since then. But, um, yeah, that was a good day out, that was A cheap day out as well, just just in this Lido. They used to have a water slide. Could just, and it was, was just a water slide. In those days, there were none of these tubes or anything like that. You know that you used to go hurtling down or whatever. Yeah, it's all changed now, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it certainly has. Gary, what have you rung in for? It's just, just, just a general chit-chat. Yeah, just to say hello. I, I've got to shoot off now, but uh, I'll try and catch you again next Friday. OK, mate, you going to work? Uh, yes, I am, yeah. What do you do? I'm a welder. All oh, right, OK, you go and go and stick some of those bits of metal together then. OK, cheers, Chris. Thanks for calling in, Gary. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye, there we are. Gary in Wales. Uh, well, Paul... Port Talbot in uh, in uh, in uh, Wales, there, boys and girls. Hey, see, see how easy it is to call in. No need to be nervous. I'm not going to bite you. I won't bite. Promise. It's just nice to talk to people uh, when they call in like that. So don't forget, if you'd like to join in this morning, uh, the Skype Skype username is Chris Reardon, all one word. C H R I. I'm sure I have got that name right, haven't I? Um. I, I, got, I got this dreadful feeling it's, it's, um, is it UK? Is it Chris Reardon UK or is it just Chris Reardon? I can't remember. Advanced call view. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure it's Chris Reardon. Can someone just try Skyping Chris Reardon to see if that works? How ridiculous that I don't know my own Skype name. Uh, I know how I can do that. I can, I can search for myself, can't I? Add contact search. Here we go. Right, just a minute now. Uh, let's see. What do I get there? All one word. Oh, there's no results. How can there be no results for my own name? <laughs> let's try the UK. Nope, no results for that either. Oh, well. Well, let's look at it. Search by name, Skype name. Or how can that, how can that not be... Oh, that's mad. Um, yeah, that's a bit mad, really. Uh, sorry, talk amongst yourselves for a moment. And this is very amateurish, really, isn't it? Search, search Skype directory, is that it? Type in my own name. No, no results. Oh, I don't know. Oh dear. Let's just. I, I think I'll have to put a message on Facebook. Stupid question. 
Is my Skype name Chris Reardon? Or is it... <laughs> Can't remember. Oh, well, someone, someone will hopefully answer that. How ridiculous is that? Don't even know my own Skype name. Never mind. Uh, yes, I think the Skype... Skype username is Chris Reardon, all one word, Chris Reardon, or the phone number once again, 020 8133 and it'd be nice to talk to you this morning. Yes, um, talking of The Voice, now this is the BBC One Challenge Show, which I quite like. I do like the hosts on there, um, I like Tom Jones, and uh, who's the boy from the script, Danny? And uh, I really like Will I Am. I think he's fantastic. I like Jessie J, although she seems to have some sort of... Um, uh, she, she goes off on a tangent sometimes, doesn't she? She's sort of very emotional. Very, we're all emotional, dear. You know, but sometimes... I'm hiding it now. I'm, I'm actually a very depressed person, but I'm hiding it this morning. I'm hiding it from you this morning. <laughs> and Jessie J goes off on a tangent. But nevertheless, I quite like the way... The voices, because it's not like the X Factor. They don't have a go at people, if you see what I mean. They're, they're, they're pretty good. Oh, hang on. Thagash Lil's with us. Um, Thagash Lil says, yes, it must be Chris Reardon. Um, what? Do I Thag Thagash Lil, yeah, it must be Chris Reardon then. Someone try Skyping on, on username Chris Ridden. Thank you, Faggish Lil. I do appreciate it. I think it's just Chris Ridden. I don't know why. It's, I've just gone completely blank on that one this morning, Lil. I can't remember my own Skype name. How stupid is that? Jerry's there. Let's have a quick word with Jerry. Good morning, Jerry. Hello. Your name is Chris Ridden. It is just one word, Chris Ridden, is it? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Jerry. I don't know why. I've just gone a complete blank this morning. Oh, you're getting old. Oh? You're getting old. Old? 50 is old. How old are you? Let's have a quick look. Don't tell me. I'm looking at your photo. 30... 31. 36. Close enough. Is that right? Is it higher? 37. 37? Higher or lower than 37? Come on, good game, good game. 37. <laughs> Where are you, Jerry? I can't remember now. I mean, Sully Hole, Hockley Heath. Oh, it sounds very posh there, mate. Yes, it is. Oh, well, it's very good. Very good. Do you watch the uh, voice at all? No. Uh, what do you watch on the telly, then? Um, Britain's Got Talent. Pardon? Britain's Got Talent. Oh, you don't, do you? I, I was just watching that before I came upstairs this morning. So you saw it on this week, yeah? Yeah. Did you see that, that girl singing? Um, she did... She had dancers with her. She did Beauty and a Beat. Yep. Which was the... Um, just Not Justin Timberlake. It was the Justin Bible one, wasn't it? Beauty yep. and a Beat. You saw that, did you? Yes. She was just dreadful, wasn't she? <laughs> I don't know, you know, I, I'm kind of watching this. It was like, like like a bad karaoke singer. She's just awful. Did you like any of them at all? Sorry? Did you like any of them at all on there, Jerry? Um, I like the, from the, um, the 3D dance. The three? Uh, 3D um, dance. Right, okay. Yeah, they're covered in white and lasers oh. come out and put 3D art on them. I haven't seen that yet. Oh, I think they'll be on tonight. The two little boys who were singing were good, weren't they? They kept telling they they could be the new Ant and Deck. They were rubbish. <laughs> oh, come on. The little one with the guitar and the other one. They were good. No. Um, no don't. I, there were a load of girls, girl dancers on there. I don't know if there was all they were all girls or the one the one in the middle was he a boy? I'm not sure. So difficult to tell these days, dear. <laughs> what's what? But anyway, mm. um, they did this dance and it was all sort of quite perfect together. But it it just came across as really aggressive to me. Did it you? Yeah. 
you know, and there's quite a lot of dance troops on there. Oh, well, Jerry, so what are you doing today? Anything exciting? Um, no, not really. You just sit there watching this? Yes, been watching you for over six years. Is that wise? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel that it's improved your life in any way at all? Um, no. I'm just watching you every day go a bit madder. <laughs> have you have you seen the the eventual decline of my brain as <coughs> as time has moved on, Jerry? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be quite sensible, and gradually over time, it just got worse and worse. I dread to think where we're going to be in ten years' time, to be honest. Um, Zimmer frame. Zimmer frame? How bloody <laughs> dare you! If it yeah. if it is, it'd be made by Rolls Royce, mate. Mm hmm. <laughs> anyway, Jerry, you have a lovely day there, okay? Okay then. Thanks for letting us know that. That so that my okay. Skype username is Chris Ridden. Cheers, Jerry. You see ya. Bye bye. It's uh, uh, the Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon, Okay, so if you've got Skype, uh, you can use it on there, Chris Reardon, all one word, C H R I S R E A R D O N. Or of course, the phone in number oh two oh eight one double three six three five eight. And I give you the phone number again uh, uh, because it's it is a local London number. All right, it's a local London number. So do do remember that. Because I don't want you thinking you're being charged one pound fifty or something like that. Well, I'm not like one of the girls on Babe Station Extreme, you know, with a fact. Call me, call me, call me, call and one pound fifty a minute or whatever that is. I, I, I have been for a couple of jobs on Babe Station actually. They didn't seem to be interested. I don't know why. Maybe they'd be interested more in someone like Jesse J on The Voice. We were just talking about The Voice, and um. I like the show, but certainly on this week's show, I noticed, and it's very annoying, people don't sing the tune. Now, when I say that, they are singing the melody, but they keep variating it. I'll give you an example. This is how I feel. And you can tell me what you think about this. This is how I feel a song should be sung. Let's 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 just um uh, come up with a song. Oh, there's another call coming in. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Chris. Oh, keep talking, and I'll try and guess your voice. Ah, oh, it's been it's just a lovely day outside, isn't it? It's just a what? A lovely day outside. It is actually a lovely day outside, but while I'm in here, I have to close the curtains. Right, and the reason why? I, well, because if I open the curtains, my, the window is on my right. And then okay. what happens is that one side of my face lights up, and the other side is completely dark. A little bit like Phantom of the Opera. Which side is your best, though? That's the question. I haven't got a, my best side. I haven't got a best yeah. side anymore. I used to have about 15 years ago. Wow. I did not best do it is yet. But it just went, no, I, I'm not. Give me some clues. Let me have some clues. Um. Uh, Wales. Hmm? Wales. Wales? Yes. Well, we just had someone on from Port Talbot. Wales. No, another clue, please. Um. Uh, I don't know. Um, Elephant Man? No, that hasn't given me a clue no, at all. No. A DJ? A DJ. Oh, yes, it's, um, damn. Oh, yes. That's the one. Uh, oh, God. Why haven't I got your name? First letter of your first name? D. A? D. David, no. No. I'm on your Facebook. I know, I know who you are. I know exactly who you are. That your name is gone. Danny. Danny. Hello, sir. Yes. All right. Hello. Are you still working? I'm fine. Out? Is it Asda's you work out? I can't remember now. No, I'm not at Asda anymore. Oh, why did you leave there then? I went to pursue a different career. 
What, DJing? No, I went to pursue my career as an entertainer. Okay, so what do you do now? Um, I'm still in the entertainment business. Right, doing what? Uh, work on holiday parks. Oh, fantastic. Where, uh, what, where, uh, any particular um, uh, chain or, or what? Um, the Brooklyn Lights chain. Pardon? The Brooklyn Lights chain. I've not heard of those. Are they just in Wales, are they? No, they're all over the country. Say that again. What's the name of the chain? It's it's the Haven. Haven Holidays. Okay, I've got you now. Haven. I understand Haven. Yeah. What did you call them before? Um, What do you mean? As in, they've always been known as Haven Holidays. But you didn't say Haven. You said something else, didn't you? Born Leisure. It's the group name. Yeah, I've I've not heard of Born Leisure. I know. Since you said Haven, I knew exactly what you meant. How fantastic is that? Oh, I that's stand bloody on the wonderful. stage and sing and dance. I know the money isn't good, is it? <clears throat> it, it it's brilliant, actually. It's quite good. Oh, really? It's, um, yeah, it's probably about seven or eight pounds an hour. Oh, well, that, that's that's more than the um, uh, than, than the minimum wage, isn't it? It is. Yeah. You get meals as well. No, you don't get meals in. You have to pay for them. You get your accommodation in free. You get your co- you yeah. get. Uh, so obviously, you get your, your gas and electric in for free. So yeah. So I mean, the only thing I have to pay for is food. Oh, that's absolutely marvellous! I'm really pleased for you. I won't lie to you. This is this is something I had thought I I I had thought of doing many many times, but. Um, you know, even as a little boy, I thought, well, no, you don't want to go into that now because you won't get much money. If you want to buy a house, you'll have to get a proper job and this, that and the other. Uh, I thought I'd do it, you know, at the other end, if you see what I mean. Um, yeah. Whether I ever try and do it now, I might be a little bit old because they, they do require a certain, I think, a, a youth, youthful look. Do you know what I mean? When you go for these jobs yeah. and what have you. Um, it, it is something that I have, I've, I've wanted to do, but I, I, there's lots of things I've wanted to, and I never really do anything about it, Danny. So I'm really pleased that you've got this. How long have you been doing this now? Uh, this will be my third year. Fantastic. Can you tell me a, a typical day, perhaps, from, from typical the moment day. you get up? Um. So do you have to do uh, other things as well as the entertainment, like... Um, don't take this wrong. Would you have to wash up? No, 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 no. We just entertain. Right. We just because there's different departments. There's an entertainment department. Okay. Um, there's a there's a leisure department. Yes. There's an arcade team, etc. So everybody that works in that team does that job. Right. So I wouldn't then go. And be a lifeguard, or I wouldn't go and be an arcade attendant. Oh, I, mean, I be, would be, be an entertainer. Be, I mean, be honest, Danny. Can you see yourself in a pair of speedos? I just can't see it, dear. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> <laughs> but a typical day would be get up, um, have a shower, you know, get ready, etc. Go to kids' class for first thing in the morning. Um, and what time? What time would you get up? It depends what time start I would be on. If I was on a breakfast, yes, um, with characters, I'd be up at seven thirty. What is a breakfast with characters? What is that? Basically, you know, you can have breakfast with the characters. The characters come round, and you know, they just say hi, and you could ask. Um, Cuddles and photos, etc. What characters are these then? This is you, you don't have to dress up, no. Yes. All oh, right. So, what do you what do you dress up as? A tiger. Oh, okay. Yes. Arr. Is there any pictures of you, Danny, as a tiger, please? No, there isn't, because obviously, oh. because obviously the tiger's real. Oh. If that makes sense. A real t- you you become a real tiger. Are you like a changeling or something like that? I'm very concerned because I like cats. You know I like cats very much, Danny. I know you do like cats, Chris. Yes. Well, this is a question I wanted to ask you. Why have you gone from a, uh, on the owl slot to a ten thirty slot? 
uh, because it, I don't get to bed till about half past three on Thursdays. <clears throat> All right, OK. <clears throat> that half hour makes all the difference, to be honest. <laughs> I think 10.30 yeah. is a good time. It, it, it kind of got a ring to it, 10.30. I do What's the time? This morning starts, isn't it? Yeah? Oh, is it really? Oh, what a load yeah. of old shit that is. You don't watch that, do you, dear? No, you can be the new Philip Schofield of online. Oh, Christ, how many more programmes is he going to be on? Well, at least we got rid of that <laughs> nasty old dancing on ice. Well, that, that's his last one next year, Oh, well, yeah. thank God for that. But he's on every blooming programme. I'm so, You know, I, I don't get me wrong, I have, I have no dislike for Philip Schofield at all. I think he's brilliant at what he does. He's, he's one of the very few presenters who can actually present, you know. He's a person child here. Yes, he, he, he's very natural, you know, nothing is fake. You know, I watch all these people on the telly now, a lot of it's fake. They're not mm -hmm. really as they are on the telly. And I think the public can see through that now. But with Philip Schofield, he comes across as being as he is on there. He's brilliant, but he's on every bloody programme. I think there has to come a point where you say, no. Well, wh he... which programme does he stick at, though? This is the thing. This, this morning. is a topic of debate for this morning. There we go. This morning. I think he should stick at this morning. There, there, I don't think there's been a programme that he's hosted that I haven't thought he can't do that one. He, he's able he to do... All. Yeah, absolutely. He's able to do everything that he that is thrown at him. Any programme that he's given, he can do. Um, however... I think he's on too much now, and I think he should be saying no. It's all very well having the money, you know, but I think he should be saying no occasionally. It's kind of a bit of a overexposure, if you see what I mean. Well, a lot of people like him, though, don't they? Yes, he's a, lot, yes. he's a housewife's favourite. Yeah, well, do you think I could be a housewife's favourite at all, Danny? Do I need to go to the gym a little bit more? Would I become a household favourite then? Do I need to buff <laughs> up? You need to you need to get on TV. <laughs> I'm on TV now, aren't I? This is a global uh, a global television program. Well, it needs to be daily, doesn't it? It needs to oh, be daily. Oh, I haven't got time to sit here every bloody day and talk to you, dear. Well, not me, but <laughs> but anyway, um, it is a known fact. He started off on the BBC on kids TV, didn't he? That's right. Yes, in the broom cupboard. I was here. <laughs> I was in, I'm sorry to tell you this. You weren't even here, were you? You were non-existent. I was non-existent, then. You didn't exist. I remember him on the BBC in the broom cupboard. Do you know what the broom cupboard was? No, I remember him on the live on <laughs> Kick and I did. How old are you, Danny? 25. OK, do you remember the BBC One Globe? Yes. Right. The BBC One Globe came from the broom cupboard. It was the BBC One presentation suite. OK? So, My. the bits in between the programmes, which I think now most of them are all pre-recorded, that all, that all used to be live. OK? I remember that. There was a very small room called, I think, the presentation suite. Right. And going back a little bit further to the seventies, what they had on the on the, the so there'd be a bloke sitting there, okay, with a kind of mixer in front of him and a few other bits and pieces, buttons everywhere. <coughs> you would never see this bloke, okay? You would never see the announcer, and it was never ever a woman. It was always at that time it was men who did all these jobs. Now, of course, uh, quite rightly so, women do all these jobs as well. So that's that's fantastic. Um, but um, in those days it was just a male announcer and he, he would have like a really uh, how would you say uh, authoritative voice example yeah. okay example now on BBC One it's time for our schools programmes at 9.30 okay that's how it was it was always very serious it was never jovial really or funny you watch the announcers on channel a friend of mine is one of the announcers on um, four, is it 4E 
E4. E4. E, is it E4? Yeah, OK. Yeah. So I've got a friend who's an announcer on there, and he's the one with the Irish... Do you ever watch that? Yeah. OK, it's the one with the Irish accent. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Right, that's my mate. His name's Danny as well, funnily enough. And if you listen on there, it's, Oh, hello, and welcome to Channel 4. And, no, no, so it's, it's very jovial. It was never like that then. Anyway, so this bloke sits there, and he would announce the bits in between the programmes and fill in if there was a technical fault, which happened not that often, but, you know, it would happen a few times a year at that time, and they would have to fill in. <clears throat> in front of him was a big wall with various different captions, like perhaps programmes coming up later. Mm -hmm. um, there was a temporary fault, a little sign, various pictures, and a mechanical model of a globe. Right? Right. And this camera was called Noddy. It was called Noddy because it used to go up and down and side to side and just... and. The, 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 the bloke doing the announcements would operate all this so that he would flick this switch and then you would see a picture of the globe going round. No. And that, that's how it used to work then. How did we get onto um, that, for Christ's sake? Um, TV and Philip Schofield. Oh, yeah, Philip Schofield. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad I know, I'm, I'm glad one of us knows where we're going. <laughs> Anyway, so that was the presentation suite. And that was also where Philip Schofield dealt, did the children's BBC. So he moved in there and put all these things all over the wall, you know, cards and everything else. I mean, I don't know what the... the, 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 other, the and the other announcements... So you, you actually saw him. You know, you actually saw him in vision. The rest of the time, there was a bloke, another bloke sitting there in this same studio, but you never saw him. All you saw was a globe. And that was all done from the little presentation suite. Uh, so they used to have them on ITV as well, didn't they? Yeah, um, yes. Um, and that started with uh, Saturday mornings. And again, I'm afraid to tell you, I was here. Saturday morning started, I think ITV started it first, with a young lady called Sally James, and it was called Saturday Scene. And basically she did the same as Philip Schofield, the bits in between the programmes. You would come to her, and I think she had puppets and all sorts of things, and then we would see Thunderbirds, and then it would come back to her, and then we'd see something else, and it would come back to her. And that's how it all worked then. But Philip Schofield, that's, that's where he started in this country. I believe he actually started his television career in New Zealand um, <clears throat> because he couldn't get in here. Basically, he, he he actually couldn't get in here. Oh, well, that's something I didn't know. You see, I I I, I try to educate people. It's very hard when it's someone like you, to be honest. But it is, <laughs> I do <laughs> I do try to educate people. Now, someone has just sent us in a little photograph of a tiger. Now, let me see if I can. Sort this well, out. I'm not watching because I'm on the phone, obviously. Oh, of course you are. Oh, that's a shame. Right, there's a picture of... Well, if you leave it till I come bit. off the phone in about, about Shall I? two minutes' time, wait to come off the phone and then put it on. OK, I can do that. Yeah. But um, how is everybody? How is the how is the cats and the family, oh. etc.? <laughs> the cats are very well, thank you very much. They're as happy as... It. Well, cats are... I've only got one oh, cat. cat. She sleeps a lot now because she's much older. But she does piss me off sometimes because she keeps walking over my vegetables. <laughs> you know, the vegetables in the garden. She goes out yeah. there when it's sunny and literally walks over them. And I get off there, get off there. And she looks over and then sits down on my carrots or something like that. You be careful, she doesn't sit the wrong way on the carrots. <laughs> <laughs> You love your job, though. So, listen, you got you got as far as the breakfast. So you got up at yep. half seven, you do the character's breakfast. What happens then? I want to know your Haven holiday day. And then we have a little happy break for about ten minutes. And then we do um, kids' clubs till midday. Right. Um, and then there's nothing for about an hour. So we go get something to eat. 
um, go and have some lunch, etc. Yes. Go back for the afternoon sessions um, for what, about what, an hour, what, two hours. What, what sort of um, the lunch and that is that? Is that you have to pay for that or? Yeah, I have to pay for my own lunch. Yeah. And is that like timed? Do, do you um, like everyone goes to lunch at one o'clock or? See, I'm trying to think when my days when I used to go to Pontins. When I was a kid, I, I thought no, we've, it, had, we've had this discussion before. When I went to Pontins in the in the seventies uh, with my mum and dad, fantastic holidays, fantastic food, but it was all fully inclusive. And your breakfast was like between eight and ten, lunch was twelve to two, dinner was eight to ten, and everyone would go to this great big hall at these times for lunch. Is that the same? No, they don't do all inclusive now. Mm. It's all self catering, right? Um, so it's just basically, if we, if we're doing everyone, everybody has the same lunch break on the entertainment team because the entertainment team work around the schedule right. of the day. So there's nothing on. You go and have lunch, or you go and do your shopping, or you go and do your washing, or something like that. Everybody has the same schedule, but you could do different things. Like I don't maybe maybe I don't do breakfast. I go in for kids clubs. So, oh, my right. day. What, so you don't have breakfast? Is. No, I don't do the breakfast for the carrot things. Oh, but you do have something to eat, do you, for breakfast? Yes. Oh, I was going to say, you can't miss... I couldn't work without breakfast, dear. I can't move until I've had a cup of tea and something to eat, dear. Oh, got to be a great British breakfast cup in a fag. Oh, no, no, dear, we don't eat dead animals, you know that, love. I don't eat dead animals. I'm vegetarianism. Oh no, we don't do vegetarianism. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, you must do a vegetarian option there. There's lots of us out there now, love. Well, well, I don't do a vegetarian option at breakfast. Well, fair enough. You either like it or you don't. You carry on eating your little sausages, darling. That's it. <laughs> well, anyway, back to yes. Yeah, so I've got my lunch. If I'm on afternoon duties, uh, we'll do the afternoon for about an hour. Um, and then once that hour's finished, we go back, we relax for a few hours, and go back and do the night shift. Everybody does the night shift. Right. Um, if it's, apart from it, if it's your day off. And does everyone um, go to sort of one place at night? Is it like one ballroom, or...? Yeah, it's like one venue, yeah. Right. And, and, what, and what will happen there? I bet you start with bingo about five o'clock, am I right? Yes. I knew it. I know. Do you ever do the bingo? I call the bingo. Yeah. Oh, how fantastic is that? It don't the old dears go mad if someone starts making a noise? Oh, I know. I've, I had one the other week. She was going. There's literally this table of of a young family. They had kids, and this kid was crying. She stood up. She waved her hand. I said, "Have you got a call?" Her? She goes, "No." There's bloody table over here. I can't hear what's going on. I was like, "That's not a call." <laughs> 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 they go mad. These wow. elderly ladies go absolutely mad if anything affects their bingo. Let me tell you that now, dear. I know, but I, some some old dears are funny. They'll stand up and go, "What was that last number?" Because it's a legal game, I yeah. have to, I have to just proceed and carry on. Yes. If you miss a number, that's not my fault. That's your fault. It's say that again. If if it's a if it's a if it's a non claim, yes. So if they miss a number out that I've called, yeah, that's not my fault. Yes, it's their fault for not paying attention. Yes, yes, absolutely, yeah, yeah. That's how it works. So, so I can't stop the game and go and she. If this woman goes, oh, what was three numbers ago? I'd be like, I can't tell you because you're supposed to be listening. Don't you have a screen or anything like that? No. Well, how does that work? Do you, so there's no... You haven't got, like, a, a grid or anything with, with the numbers that have been called? The number is on, on a little board in front of me. A tabletop thing? Yeah. Oh, well, that's no bleeding good, is it? You know, I wow. used to do bingo. You, you can have a look at it when you go. Um, <clears throat> I had this wonderful piece of software... Uh, and I got it from Lee's Bingo. Write that down. L W -E, e S. Lee's Bingo. Right? Right. And it was basically uh, 
a computer program which runs on a PC, <coughs> and you, you, it's got various different games on it. You will find the normal bingo, ga bingo game on there, and you used to click the button, and a number would come up. You know, thirty-two. Click another one, and sixteen would come up. Sixteen. Click another one on its own, number eight, and these numbers would come up. But once they come up, they would then go on a grid on the screen in front of you. And let me just try to remember now. I think you could do it split screen. So you had the screen that you would be able to see mm. and the screen that the people playing the bingo would be able to see as well. Right. And this thing would, 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 would be, well, in the, in the venues I worked at, they usually got, I mean, most venues have now got video screens all around the pub or some sort of TV screen. And they used to just plug in there. And there you'd have a grid of the numbers called and the last number called would be there flashing. And that's how it worked. And I find that really strange. Someone like, somewhere like Haven Holidays wouldn't have something like that. This software was actually very cheap. We're talking like 20 quid. It well, it, the thing is, there's, there's 36 parks around the country. Every, bing, every park does bingo. So, you know, that times 36. It's a lot of money, isn't it? Oh, yeah, but look at the money they get in from people spending their holiday. That would be worth them. Uh, do you not have TV screens up on the wall anywhere? No, the only screens we do have yeah. are for character shows. Oh. And every park has got a projector. Because yeah. of the because of the because of the character shows. Well, you could it would work on the projector. Yeah, but we have got a PC to to put it on. You could do it on your laptop, or or, or you not you have to do what they say. You you couldn't say, look, we can do this better like this. Would they then say to you, no, you do it this way? You've got to do it that way. Oh well, fair enough. Oh oh well. So you called a bingo, <clears throat> and then do they have a little break then after the bingo? We have a little disco break, yeah. Right. Do you um, do the DJing? We, but I can do the DJing or other... If I've just called the bingo, I'll then pull off. Is it DJ... Uh, hang on, I, I could do a jingle. Is it like this? DJ Danny in the house at... No. What, what did you say it was called again? Haven. DJ Danny in the house. Haven holidays. No, it's not like that. Oh. All our jingles are pre-made anyway. Oh, OK, right. So you do your little um, disco, then what? So we do our bingo, we take the stage down, we take the set down for bingo. Yeah. That table and stuff. And then we get ready for the character show. OK. Um, so we go and get ready for character show. And then character show finishes, disco break. Um, then we have um, a game show. Game show finishes. Then the main cabaret of the night comes on for their first set. We have a game show, cabaret go on back on, and then we have a disco break till the end of the night. What are the game shows like? What sort of things things do you play there? Um, we have one called Guns Roulette. You have what? A, a game show called Guns Roulette. Guns Roulette? Roulette? Guns? Guns. Oh, guns! I thought you said guns. Then I thought it was sort of, no. and, you know, all the all the customers are in a circle, and you flick a gun around and you just shoot one of them randomly. <laughs> I thought it was something like that. I thought, what an awful game to play, dear! Don't want to no, go on guns. holiday and come back dead. Guns roulette. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, and basically, it's one of the one of the entertainment team in the seat, either red or blue. Guns. Um, and you get guns to do yeah? Yes. Oh, no, dear. I don't like that. What is that stuff made out of? Um, it's powder. Oh. Is it nasty it's powder. when it gets on you? Does it, does it get all stuck in your hair, or does it wash out easy? It sticks in your hair. It, oh, and when it gets on your uniform and you, you, your clothes that you're wearing for the game show, yeah. it's horrible. Oh, no, I don't think I'd like, like guns. The floor. It, imagine, imagine... Um, no house party, but on a smaller scale. OK, yeah. yeah it's fair dues, fair dues. For now, um, we have party dances as well. Uh, party dances, like oh yeah, we've all done those. We all do those. They're like Macarena and all that business, but your own version. Macarena of and, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. What's my day? I'm going to go home and go to bed and then do it all over again. And so the cabaret is like singers and perhaps tribute bands and things like that. Anyone we know are famous at all? 
Um, anyone that I know. Oh, no, I'm, no. I'm I mean, any, anyone that I, I would know as, as a famous, or is it like up and coming people or, or what? I've met, I've met Guy in Books Fizz. I remember his name now. Oh, Mike. I've met Chico. Oh, Chico. I've met, yes, I've met, um, what's his name? Shane Ritchie's son. Shane Ritchie Jr. Yes. Also met um, Stavros Flatley, who's got talent. And did did you manage to get off with any of these people? No. <laughs> <laughs> Stavros, is he the big guy? Yes, the dancer. So you get people from like sort of like things like Britain's Got Talent and that sort of thing, then. Yeah, TV shows and stuff like that. Yeah. I would call them, you know, I would call them entertainers, but nevertheless, Z-list celebrities. <laughs> Although no, not the guy from from, from Bucks Fizz. Uh, I think you mean Mike. Do you mean Mike Nolan? You know the other one. Oh, what was his name? <clears throat> so the one that wasn't in the car crash, yeah. The wasn't, yeah, the one that wasn't in the car crash, yeah. Okay, yeah. Him. Um, so I've met him. I've met uh, what's his name, Ray. From the other the drifters, he was in the drifters. Ray drifters something. sitting in the back row on the movie of a that's Saturday what, night with you. See, I know all the songs. That's what, I could that's, be. That's more your thing, isn't it, the drifters? I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? That's more your thing, isn't it, drifters? Not your era, shall we? Drifting from place to place, you know me. Never sitting still in one one place for more than a few seconds. I know. Well, anyway, I'm going to have to shoot. All right. Well, thank uh, you for telling us a, a wonderful insight into um, uh, 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 Haven Holidays there. And, uh, yeah, that's. I think that's brilliant to be able to do something. And you love it, don't you? I bet you get tired, but it. you love it. Am I right? I get tired, but I love it. Yeah. I do get... I do love the job. You're very, very lucky to have such a job. Well done, Danny. Right, well, show me this picture in about two minutes. OK, I will do. Thank you very much. Take care, bye. Love to everyone in Wales. The whole of Wales is watching and listening this morning. It's fantastic. Thanks, Danny. Bye. Bye-bye, there we are. Danny calling in from uh, uh, Works in Haven Holidays. What a job that is. What a fantastic job that is. We'll, we'll stick that picture up in a minute um, of the uh, 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 tiger that he wants to see. Thanks very much to uh, Ben for sending that in there. A couple of messages... Um, <clears throat> Coming in on the Facebook. Hello to Nathan. Nathan, how are you, sir? Are you are you on Grand Canaria? Are we are we got viewers on Grand Canaria this morning? He says, um, Chris Reardon is your name on the um on the Skype. So it is Chris Reardon. All one word, Chris Reardon on the Skype, if you want to contact the show this morning. Uh, good morning to Dean and uh Belle. Hello, Belle and Sean as well. All uh sending little messages on Facebook. Good morning, boys and girls. Okay. Uh, there's an email address as well. If you're watching a recording of the show, uh, then you can join us uh, by um, uh, sending a message to chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk. That's the email address, okay? Chris at uh, United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk. Uh, YouTube Fowzor TV has commented cot K O T cot. I'm not sure that what that means. Does anyone know cot? We're not quite sure what that means. Do let us know because we're not quite sure what that means. Okay, cot. But thank you for the message anyway. It might, might be nice. It might not be. I have no idea what that means. Um, Fag Ashley also says, is it Bobby G from Bucks Fizz? Oh, wasn't he the one from, um, Bobby G? It, it could have been. I don't know. Was he in, or was he in Brother of the Man? I get the two confused. Brother of the Man and, uh, Bucks Fizz. They're getting on a bit now as well, aren't they? Oh, there's a text message coming in, hello. Oh, he's so stupid. My, my best mate is just, um, uh, uh, trying to call it, call it what, you know, he says, I've just tried Skype and FaceTime. <sighs> I, I'm doing a show. I'm not talking to you now. He can come if he wants to. Do you know what I mean? Now, um, uh, okay. Yes, the tiger. Thank you very much to Ben for sending in this picture of a tiger from apparently, uh, not Warner Brothers. What is it? Warner... Um, 
Warner... War, not Warner, but why does that say test at the top there? That's strange, isn't it? I don't know why that says test at the top there. That's that's apparently the tiger from... Uh, Haven Holidays. Okay? Haven Holidays tiger, there you are. Is that what you look like? <laughs> <laughs> Bless his eyes. <laughs> Little tiger, Danny the tiger. We love it. We absolutely love it. Now, I was telling you <clears throat> um, about the voice. Yes. So when they come in and sing, they don't sing the song as it would be. For example, let me sing you a little snatch of a Frank Sinatra. Now, I'm not a singer, okay? Um, um, that's why the lady is a tramp. <clears throat> okay, just take that that line. That's how it should it should sound. So the people on the voice should sound if they're given this song to sing. That's why the lady is a tramp, but they don't sing it like that. And I find that incredibly annoying. They would sing it like this. That's why the lady is a tramp. And I'm, I'm, it's cringing watching them do this. Are they being told to sing the songs like this, I wonder? Does anyone know if they're being told? Because it just sounds bloody awful. Now, what is that called when they don't, when they sing, rather than sing the note, they sing around the note. Does anyone know what that's called at all? Please do let us know. Get in contact with the show. You can Skype in this morning. All one word is the Skype username, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Or, of course, you can phone in 020-8133-6358 is the local London number. Do you watch The Voice? Does it annoy you the way they, some of them, a lot of them sing the songs? They don't sing... The note, as it is, they sing around the note, going up and down, variating it. I find that incredibly annoying. That's why the lady is a tramp. Sing it as it should be, please. It's very annoying. Call in if you want to. Local London number 020-8133-6358. Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon. Or indeed, you can email in as well. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, ben. It can't be called that, can it? I can't. <laughs> oh, Ben. I'm just going to check that before I read that out. Are you trying to catch me out here? Just a minute. Uh, <laughs> one second. Looking something up on the internet. You see what I mean when I, when I have to... Oh, it is. Okay. Apparently, it's called scatting. That singing, when they sing, instead of sing, like that, is called scat singing. I've just looked, I've looked it up on uh, Wikipedia and Ben... Karaoke Ben. Uh, ben does the uh, karaoke show. Where are you this weekend, Ben? Do let us know. Um, karaoke Ben tells me it's called scatting or scat singing when they sing like that. And I just find it so annoying. Why can't they just sing the song as it is, please? Just sing it as it is, if you don't mind. Mucking around with all that going up and down and what have you all the time. What do you think? Do let us know, Chris. Uh, UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk if you're watching uh, the recording, OK? Um, so that's it. Uh, my feet. Do you remember? Regular viewers and listeners to the show will know I've been having a bit of a problem with my feet. Anyway, so actually it was a week before this. Uh, the week before this, uh, I did pop down to... I had a hospital appointment because I go to the hospital um, uh, every few months. I have a little thing that they have to look after. And uh, any problems I have, I just tell them what they are and uh, they sort it out. So he's made an appointment now uh, for four weeks' time. <clears throat> for me to go to the hospital and have my feet uh, stretched. Now, I can't remember what this is called. The pain in the foot, or, or both feet actually, although it's more the right than the left one, it's between... Uh, I'll just get my foot up on there. For, it's, it's my foot with sock on. There it is. Oh, God. I just about managed to get my leg up there. Uh, the, the foot problem is between 
the bottom of the the little toe down to the arch in my foot. Excuse me a minute. That's better. <clears throat> down to the arch in my foot. Okay? That's where the problem is. And it gets very painful. And sometimes the pain is a bit sharp. And sometimes it's blunt. Anyway, this has been going on now for about eight weeks. I have a feeling that like the various other little pains I've been having recently, I do put it down to age actually, I have a feeling it will sort itself out on its own, but it was going on a bit long, so I, I kept it going, uh, uh, so, so I went down to the doctor, and uh, he's now ma ma made an, a, 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 an appointment for me at the um, Osti Osteo something or other, I can't remember what it's called now, Osteo thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's the bone person. And he reckons, he did say what it was, and I can't remember for the life of me what he said it was, but he reckons that my foot is kind of curling over slightly. And it needs to be stretched out. The muscles need to be stretched out, or the tendons. Um, so that's what's going to happen. Now, that was last week. I've got to say... The last couple of, and this often happens with me, the last couple of days, it's not as bad as it has been. So I have a feeling it's starting to sort itself out. But I'll, I'll stick to the appointment and I will go down there um, and so they can have a little little play around with my feet. But there we are. So the feet uh, are, are actually feeling uh, a lot better now. I'm pleased to say I'm able now to walk around with not so much pain. If I kind of, you know, when you get your little little toe and kind of bend it, you know, I'm, I'm doing it now. You know, get your little toe and you bend it. OK, so the left one, I can do that. No pain. The right one, slight pain. OK, slight pain, but nowhere near as bad as it was last week. And remember, this has been going on for quite a few weeks. I think it's starting to sort itself out. So fingers crossed with that. Um, all right. Uh, good morning to Marge in Oklahoma. Good morning, Marge. Where it is? Hang on. 10, 30, 11, 11, 30, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Where well, it's about 5.30 in the morning in Oklahoma. And Marge is up bright and early. Good morning, Marge. Hope you're well today. And uh, Ben in London says uh, he's doing karaoke tonight at the Prince of Wales on Wilsdon Lane in Kilburn. So if you're up in North London, fancy a little bit of a sing song with Mr. Ben karaoke. The Prince of Wales tonight, Wilsdon Lane, Kilburn and Sunday at the Pig and Whistle on Labbrook Grove. OK. And Ben also says that bloke is going to see the osteopath. That's right. That's the word osteopath. That's uh, that's the bloke I'm going to see. I'm doing karaoke as well this weekend, boys and girls. Uh, Saturday night, I shall be at the Laurel Tree in Hammersmith. That's on Shepherd's Bush Road, just a couple of doors down uh, from uh, a place I used to work at, Blushes. So that's quite nice. Uh, the Laurel Tree in Hammersmith on this Saturday, the 1st of June, from 9pm till 1am. That's where I am doing karaoke uh, on Saturday night. All right. A couple of emails uh, coming in today. Hello to James. Hello, young James. Who writes, Andrew Lloyd Webber <clears throat> is the bloke that chose the songs for the Eurovision Song Contest that you were talking about last week. Well, he chose one of the, he chose one of the songs. And actually, I thought, I thought it was quite nice, wasn't it? It was that My Life. It's my life, it's my life, my moment. I'm not gonna da-da-da-da. My life, it's my... Is that the right words? I've got the right tune, though. I'm often not very good at um, uh, words. Um, James says, I think the UK entry needs another catchy song. Um, yes, it does. I mean, this this year's this year's entry was hardly catchy, was it? And, you know, total respect to Bonnie Tyler, big star and all that. I think she was the wrong person to be doing it. I keep picking the wrong people. <clears throat> but as I said on the show last week... Um, there are now people saying, oh, hang on a minute, why aren't we choosing the songs? That's why it's not winning, because we're not choosing the songs. I beg to differ. Because when we were choosing the songs, people like Daz Sounds were put through. You know, a great rapper. It just didn't sound right. He did it. Um, who else was it that, that we put through that didn't get anywhere? 
var various dis different people that we put through that got nowhere. So you can't use that argument that we're not winning because we're not choosing the songs because we have chose the songs. However, I do think we should be choosing the songs, whether we get it wrong or right. It's up to the public to choose the songs, not the BBC. And we'll see what happens with that one next year. James says, I've never heard of the conspiracy theorist guy from America that Marge was on about. Yeah, she told us about that last week. But the UK equivalent to him is David Icke. He likes his ghosts and aliens. Oh, yes, David Icke. David, he's got a website, uh, uh, and he's got a big website, which actually is a little bit too, it's a bit too complicated for me to follow that website. I do have a look at it, um, but I, I can't really understand what's going on on that one, all right? Um, have a look, 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 look him up, David Icke. He thinks the world is run by lizards and things like that, and conspiracy theories and ghosts and all that business. David Icke. David Icke used to be um, a very um, renowned presenter on BBC's Grandstand and he did sports programmes and all that and he did all that and then suddenly he kind of uh, well he just changed have a look at his website David Icke comes across as a nice bloke though he believes what he says and so respect to him for that the colour purple comes to mind as well with David Icke I don't know why why would the colour purple come to hmm don't know colour purple comes to mind I think that's something to do with David Icke as well James says, shame about the soldier that died not far from me. That was the uh, the guy, of course, in Woolwich uh, who was murdered last week. What made it worse was the neothandral men from the EDL group were causing trouble on the streets that night. Oh, well, of course, all the far, far right parties are always looking, looking to... Uh, uh, to create hassle out of something like this. You will, you will always get that wherever you are in the world, I'm afraid. He says, talking about the tornado, wasn't Stacey White, who also did a show on United Kingdom Radio a couple of years ago in Oklahoma? Yes, he was. Stacey White was in Oklahoma. I don't know, Marge, do you know Stacey White? He was in charge of the police in Oklahoma, somewhere in Oklahoma um, uh, 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 a while ago. Do you, I don't suppose you'd know Stacey White, would you? I know he's all right. It must be terrible to go through something like a tornado, and so fierce too. Mobile phones, you were talking about last week, would attract lightning. Are you telling me, like, if you was using a mobile phone, it would actually attract lightning? I wonder if that's true or not. I don't know. I don't know. As a mobile phone has an antenna, it would be the same as like a TV or a CB uh, amateur radio, because the antenna is made of metal to receive the signal. Yes, um, I asked before, I, I did have a, a CB aerial put up last year. I took it down again because, quite frankly, there's, there's, there's barely anyone on there. Um, and I found that the people who were on CB radio now are very much... Uh, a closed sort of shop and it's difficult to break into that group of people because I was on CB radio in the 80s and it was great you just go on you pick a conversation there'd be hundreds and hundreds of people on there now there are very there are lots of empty channels and no one chatting on there at all and um, I, I, I kept it going for a few months and I sort of gave up with it so I, I put it all away again I didn't bother with it again um, so, yes, um, but I did ask the guy when I put up the CBO, I said, is this a bit dodgy and lightning? He said, well, you know, lightning, you really know, no more likely to be struck by lightning on your aerial than anyone else. And how many aerials are there? And you look around, and of course, there's aerials all over the place. So he, he, he reckons it's, it's pretty safe to have an aerial. If you get struck, then you're just unlucky. You know, you're just unlucky. Starbucks, James says. I don't see it as posh, because someone said they thought Starbucks was posh yesterday. It was um, uh, it was Yannick, wasn't it? Uh, sorry, last week. Yannick says he thought Starbucks was a bit posh. And I said it's not posh. If it was posh, I wouldn't mind spending the money, you know. I wouldn't mind spending £2.20 on a piece of cake. I, I went for lunch yesterday in Waitrose. I had two pieces of pizza. I had a bag of crisps, a chocolate cake, a, 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 a cup of tea. It cost me 10 quid, right? But when you look around and you're thinking, OK, fair enough, 
10 quid's fair enough for, 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 for this experience. Starbucks is not in that class of place. So I don't feel happy paying £2 for one tiny piece of cake. You see, do you see what I mean? In some places, if you went to Claridge's Hotel, you possibly would expect to pay five, six, seven pounds for that same small piece of cake. But there, fair enough. It's a different ball game altogether. It's a very classy establishment. You wouldn't get into Claridge's with a pair of tracksuit bottoms and a t-shirt on. You would in Starbucks. They charge too much for their stuff. It's not posh. And uh, also James says it's uh, James also says it's not posh, posh either. James says I uh, like to see coffee shops like designer labels, just something for people to brag about, just like Ronnie does with his designer labels or my best mate Ronnie. Yes, he loves his designer labels, you know that. Um as for UKIP, I don't think they are racist at all. No, neither do I. I don't think UKIP are racists. As always in the news in the UK, they have a lot of problems that need sorting out, like Europe. But I hope UKIP can get back on track after the problems Nigel Farage has in Scotland. Yes, he, had, he did have some problems there in Scotland, didn't he? Poor old Nigel. Did he get attacked there? I, I quite like Nigel. I might not agree with... You know, you don't necessarily have to agree with everyone pol everyone's policies to, dis, uh, to, uh, to like them. I like Nigel Farage. He's got such charisma. He really has got a lot of charisma. Same as Boris Johnson. I th and, and, and Boris Johnson has a lot of charisma as well. And I think, you know, sometimes that, that can get you through, can't it? Charisma like that. Yeah. So there we are. Um, <clears throat> let's just uh, uh, check something there. Are we, are we missing things here? I think I might be missing something here. Oh, here we go. Marge has sent in a little message. Morning, Marge. Uh, Marge says, uh, Tornado came one mile from my house. Another tornado came just one mile from her house yesterday and one bubbled up over my house. I'm glad to be here today. <sighs> When you say it bubbled up over your house, do you see the funnel coming down towards you? Oh my God, that must be terrifying. Terrifying to see a funnel coming down towards you. You know, how long does that take? You know, we all know how quickly tornadoes move, but you know when the funnel comes down, how long does it take for the funnel to come down and touch the ground? And and does it always come all the way down, or does sometimes it start coming down and it changes its mind and go back up again? Tell us, Marge, because we don't know here in the UK. We don't have such things. Marge says um, she's never heard of Stacy White. Um, okay, uh, he's a he's a he was a, a police officer in uh oklahoma and um uh actually fag ashley also says stacy is from kiefer is it kiefer or kefla kiefer in oklahoma kiefer i don't know if that's near you or marge ben says it could be paranormal tendonitis i think that's what he said ben Paran was it peroneal tendonitis i'm sure that's what he said per peroneal tendonitis that's what i got in my foot and he says it just needs to be stretched out a bit all right so that's that's my poor old feet at the moment being caused by something that we don't know that's caused that um gonna say hello to lovely anita anita is a barry manilow fan and as you oh do you know oh, oh my god shock horror I put my, put my flag of, of, of the Queen up behind me and I haven't replaced my Barry Manilow calendar. Shock horror. I'll do it as soon as I finish. I've got, I've got, I've actually got the nail here waiting to do it. Look at this nail, nail. I've got to put my Barry Manilow calendar back up on the wall because the Fanilows will have me for that one. Where has the Barry calendar gone? I'm sorry, Fanilows everywhere. The Manilow calendar will be back up on the wall as soon as I finish the show, OK? And uh, Anita says, good morning, Chris. Good morning, good afternoon, Chris. Haven't written to you in a while. It has been noticed, Anita. I do worry when I don't hear from people for a while. Little Wendy. Wendy, where are you, darling? Are you with us this morning, Wendy? Anita says, hope everything is going well for you. 
sent a birthday package for Barry's birthday, which is on June the 17th. Is he, is he 70 this year, Barry Manilow's 70? And he still completely sells out places. It's fantastic. I love Barry Manilow. I, 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 I'm getting bad withdrawal. I need to go and see a Barry Manilow concert soon. Hopefully. I don't know if I can wait till next year. Mm. Do you miss him? I also included in the email I sent to you about my Platinum Barry meeting. Mentioned your name in a note. Also told Barry what a fan you are and even mentioned maybe an interview for you with Barry. <sighs> my God. I don't know if I could do an interview with Barry. An interview with Barry Manilow. I don't know what I'd say to him. I think I'd just like completely freeze up. <laughs> I just want him to sit there and sing all his songs to me. I would. Even now. And somewhere down the road. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I'd, I'd just be all over the place. I'm sure I would. I wouldn't know what to do. I've done a couple of little uh, interviews in here. We've chatted to, of course, at Nicky French, who represented the UK at the Eurovision Song Contest uh, some years ago, and uh, I've had uh, James Dean here and, and Ronnie. But these are all, all like, kind of um, friends, people I've known already. I don't actually know Barry Manilow. I don't know if I could do such a thing. I'm, I, I might just completely fall apart. <laughs> but thank you, Anita. You know, if the opportunity, if, you know, if, if I ever got a, a little note, hello, it's Barry here. I mean, I don't suppose he'd send a letter himself. It'd be one of his, uh, uh, one of his uh, people, you know, that, that deal with all his things. Cause he's probably got, um, all sorts of various people working for him, doing all this arranging and what have you. So it would be someone like that that would contact me. But if they did, I, I I would go, you know, with my little camera and my little microphone and what have you. But I, I don't I don't know what would happen. Maybe the, perhaps that's part of the fun of it. You know, just sitting there chatting, as we do on this show. Um, don't know if it will help, but it certainly won't hurt to ask. Yeah, thank you very much, Anita. I do appreciate that. Your four concert trips were in the note too, especially the Broadway concert. Only time will tell. But I know how much you would love an interview. I would. I would love, I love, love a little interview, or I prefer to call it a chat. I don't really do interviews. I do chats with people. Do you know what I mean? I think there's a difference there. But I, I would go. I would go. love to have a go. But I don't, I'd be, I, would I be nervous? I think I probably would. I'd probably be very nervous interviewing someone like, someone like Barry Manilow. It, the strange thing is it wouldn't be nervous for me to interview um, oh, Philip Schofield, someone we are talking about earlier. Philip Schofield, anyone on the telly down here. I think it's because I have such high regard for this person, the Queen. I would be terribly nervous about perhaps going to have a chat with the Queen. Or Barry Manilow. I have such high regard for him and his work. I would be very nervous. Perhaps I wouldn't even show it. I don't know. Don't know until it would happen, would you? Really wouldn't. But I would go, yes. Absolutely would go. Um, good. You don't think he'd fly me out there first class, do you? Or you just thought I'd ask, you know. Perhaps I shouldn't mention that if I get the phone call. <laughs> Good luck. Have a great day. Uh, your friend from Tennessee, Anita. Thank you, uh, Anita. Anita's the one who went to see uh, Barry Manilow at a uh, platinum, platinum, um, uh, platinum experience where you pay. It's quite expensive. I think it's about one and a half thousand dollars. But that doesn't. That money goes to charity. It doesn't go to him. It goes to charity, and you pay that, and you get to meet Barry. You get your photograph taken. You get a front row seat. And I think a couple of uh, a little champagne reception or something like that, which is all very nice, all very very nice indeed. And I'm, gl I'm glad you had the experience. And Anita, I get the feeling you're going to save up and do that again. Am I right? I think you might do that again. Will I do that if he comes to the UK? I'd like to, but very nervous about it. Very very nervous. You you wouldn't think that about me, would you? You wouldn't think I would be nervous to do such a thing. <laughs> there you go. Um, 
Anyone else who wants to contact the show this morning, you're with us live. If it's 5 to 12 on Friday, May the 31st, then you are with us live. You've still got time to contact the show, uh, either by Skype, Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N, all one word, Chris Reardon, or indeed the phone-in number 020 eight one double three six three five eight. Local non- London number 020 eight one double three six three five eight if you're going to contact us do it nice and quickly uh before we go all right well what's this here just a second i think um is he trying to call in there i think we've had my best mate just try and call in let's see if he's still there try and get him back Let's try and get them back on there for you. One second. I just note, just notice a little missed call from him. The person whom you're trying to reach oh. is currently unavailable. Oh, well, he's not there now. No, he must have disappeared. Just a second. I'll, I'll call him and see if he wants to chat quickly. Um, Fagash Lil says, all this talk about tornadoes. Glad we don't have many over here. Strange how you've had a couple of Welsh callers this morning. Did the earthquake they had the other day woke, wake them all up? No, I'm sure they're always awake, dear. They're always awake. They're always there awake. Don't you worry about that. All right. Um, uh, finally, to, oh, yes, and we had, um, that was the other thing. Anita uh, sent this little Facebook message uh, asking me if I would voted. Uh, this is the Kennedy Centre Honours recommendation. Probably do a Google search on this. Uh, Kennedy. Oh, no, there, there's, there's a website. www.kennedy-centre.org forward slash honours. And honours, in this case, is spelt H-O-N-O-R-S because they're Americans. And they don't have U's. They have any U's there. No, no, us, no, us, no, us there. Okay, so, um, and I voted for Barry Manilow at the Kennedy Center, Kennedy Dash Center dot org forward slash honors awards. So I did, I did vote for Barry, Barry Manilow there. You may uh, like to have a look, 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 little look at that and vote on your uh, uh, favorite entertainment type person. And someone will win an award, OK? Um, Marge says, I would like to know is if Fagash Lil will let me be her friend on Facebook. Fagash Lil, Marge wants to be your friend on Facebook. I shall send Fagash Lil right now a little link to your Facebook, OK? And then if she wants to, she can add you. OK? You see, here I am bringing new friends together. Uh, on the subject of tornadoes. Marge says the winds were spinning and trying to lower over my house. And the tornadoes sometimes form fast and sometimes only just form a lowering but not going down all the way. So uh, sometimes they come down and they go back up again. I did wonder about that, because as I say, we know nothing about um, tornadoes here in the UK, really. Finally today, uh, anyone else want to ring in nice and quickly? OK, you, you've got the information there. Skype username, Chris Reardon, phone number 020-8133-6358. Be quick, though, because I'm going to disappear in a second. All right. Uh, finally today, uh, from Joe Morris. Now, Joe used to do his own podcast, uh, American Talk USA, uh, which is no longer with us. Now, he's, he's, he's here. The, <laughs> the podcast is no longer here, OK? It says, congratulations, Chris, on the newest addition to your family. Yes, uh, because uh, my nephew, St uh, Gary, and his wife, Stacey, have had a new baby, Harry, who's, who's doing very well. He, apparently he kept her up a lot last night oh just a minute there we go here comes here comes face ache now i knew he was going to be on here you'll be able to see him pop up here good morning oh, no, dear. I look awful. well you do but they've all seen you now so it's too late did you try and call in a minute ago 
Uh, I tried to do Skype ages ago. Can you do it now or not? How long have you been doing this? Uh, hour and a half. <sighs> oh, mass suicide across England. Well, you've only got ten minutes left, though. Do you want to do this I or not? Really... Make your mind up, quick. No, I've got to start the computer up and all that. Okay, I'll ring you in a minute. Thank you. Bye bye. There we are. He's not available to chat today. Never mind. Uh, back to the email. Um, it says London was great because Joe's recently visited London. I was hoping to be. He was hoping to meet up with me. I was hoping to meet up with him, but unfortunately, bang at the same time, a new little baby was born. So there we are. That's that's why we didn't meet up. He's been to London. He went to see Les Miserables at the Queen's. Oh yes, love the music, don't you? We love the music in that. The coastal path was simply stunning because he went walking along the coast, which I think I think that's a wonderful thing for him to do. Just walking along the coast of the UK and, and seeing what there is to see. The weather was less than cooperative. Two good days out of seven. We were lucky to get two bloody good days, to be honest. That's how it is in the UK. Don't come here expecting a sunny holiday, dear. <laughs> if you want that, you've got to go to Australia. Guaranteed sunshine there most of the time in Australia. Although I think they had a bad summer. Was it last year or the year before? Um, oh, Fag Ashley says, hell yeah, Tar Marge. She looks like she's going to become your friend on Facebook. OK, I've sent her the little link there. The coastal path was simply stunning. The weather was less than cooperative. As I hiked one day in 45 degree temperatures, raining in... Sh that's, that's Fahrenheit. So what's that? That must be just above freezing, I think, there. I, I, I'm not quite sure of... Uh, exactly what what that sort of temperature is there. Um, the weather was less than a quarter. Uh, raining in sheets, winds of 30 mile an hour. I passed through a small village and a man yelled to me, rather English day, good day for it. That would have been a rather English day, to be honest. He says, even the locals knew to stay in the pubs. Oh, it was, isn't that lovely, being able to go, go walking along the English countryside and you just pop into a pub. You'll always find someone to talk to you in one of these English uh, pubs along the coast. All the best. Hope to sink our schedules one day. Attached is a sunny picture from Wales Coastal Path. Beautiful country, beautiful, friendly people. Uh, regards from Joe. It's a, a black and white picture. You can't really see it that well. But um, a, a, a beautiful time and a wonderful time. I'm glad you enjoyed uh, coming to our little country. All right, Joe. Uh, indeed, that's it from the show today. Thank you very much for watching and listening, boys and girls. If you're watching a recording of the show, you can join us live every Friday morning at 10.30 UK time. We're on British summer time at the moment, OK? So 10.30 British summer time. Uh, that is 9.30 GMT, OK? 9.30 GMT on Friday mornings. Do send us an email. Tell us what you're about. Were you up to any thoughts on anything on the show today? Uh, I'd love to know about them. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I'll see you on the next show. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye now.